Hello everyone, in this video I wanted to go over VWAPs, especially as we're now nearing new all-time highs. Well, we're at all-time highs already, but you know, we're continuously breaching that at the moment. Um, VWAPs are a really powerful tool in this aspect, um, session VWAP, anchored VWAPs, VWAP closes for directional bias as well, and I want to cover some stats relating towards that. Um, but yes, let's just get into it straight away, which is session VWAPs. Um, I don't use this tool too often, if I'm honest with you. Obviously, you can use you know, the way I'd be using it is using it for intraday bias. Again, uh, I'll show you how I use the other tools as well. But this tool, I'm using it for intraday bias. Generally, the first touch after a long move away from it is where I'm looking for a potential reaction if it especially lines up with other areas of confluence. So, for example, here, what I'd be doing, you can see here on this on a day like this, price really spreads away from it. Time spent away, time spent away. Obviously, here, you deviate below it. Okay, but this is where you'd be looking for a potential bid, right? And especially if this is areas lining up with other areas of confluence, that is where you'd be wanting wanting to look for a long. Um, in this case, all it did was sweep these lows before reclaiming it really, really swiftly. And this is the thing, you know, using session VWAP throughout the day is really, really powerful. Not just looking for levels of reactions, but looking for deviations, reclaims of the level, especially for trend continuation on the day. You know, the day for this day, for example, you know, if we're just looking at it on the 15 minute, Price on the day, you know, and again, I'd recommend looking at my market structure videos because I talk about looking at structure on a day by day basis. It's really, really powerful. You know, this is the way my brain would be thinking. Price is trending up. You know, really, we bounced off VWAP there. Again, kind of here, away from it. Spent some time away, spent some time away. Now we're coming into it. Now there's a few things crossing my mind in relation to this. You know, are we going to be seeing new new highs, etc.? The first thing is, is this a good high? Is this a clean high? You know, does this high need to be revisited? OK, um, because obviously if it does, then it would increase the likelihood that I'm going to be looking for a long off the VWAP or a sweep of lows or reclaim deviation, whatever. I, I wouldn't say in this case it actually did. You know, it wasn't a, port, a bad high at all, to be honest. Um, so that doesn't really play into a part. Nonetheless, you still sweep these lows. You know, I, I would be saying to myself, if price loses these lows convincingly, well, then you've got a massive set of inefficiencies to run through. All price does in this case, right, is it sweeps the lows very, very quickly back above VWAP. And in that case, then you can you obviously make new highs with a massive large wick and then you continue from interview up again and continue higher. So this is the way I'd be using it on an intraday basis. You know, for example, the market was trying to move higher yesterday, right? It moved much higher, obviously, to new all-time highs. Saw a test into VWAP, you know, didn't necessarily find support directly at that level, but swept through it. You know, and this is the thing, uh, really, really crucial about VWAP because you can get a lot of potential trap traders from it off these false bounces. Uh, for example, here, what you'd be wanting to look for are people that are actually really, really vulnerable in trading just direct VWAP bounces. Um, you know, people would be, you'd see early longs piling in here, meaning an increase in open interest, positive delta. People would be looking for long positions, you know, breaching that level, um, trying to bounce off of VWAP. Where they're going to place their stop below VWAP, they get stopped, right? VWAP gets reclaimed at this point, and then you see continuation at that point. So look for these deviations. Look for the early people getting stopped off trading VWAP, um, session VWAP in this case, um, and get intraday signs of, you know, strength or weakness. Um, now, my more favored use case of VWAPs in general is the anchored VWAP. Again, you can use this on trading view. And by the way, um, my session VWAP, or just regular VWAP, you know, standard session HLC3, uh, higher close three VWAP, you know, all settings are on standard when I'm when I'm using that. Um, but yes, you obviously have now anchored VWAP, which in my opinion is much more powerful. You dictate where the pull is taken from, uh, which obviously actually aligns a lot of power towards it. Um, and for me, I'm taking it from the start of impulses. Now there is no time frame specific um, setting you have to be using in that case. You know, you can be using any time frame. For me, I'm generally tending to use this on the higher time frame to get a zone of interest and then look for reactions on the lower time frames. Um, but for example, the 30 minute the hourly is perfectly fine. You know, wherever that impulse comes from, you know, I'd be taking one from here. Whoops, that's the wrong tool down here. So you can see here, I'll be taking it from this here and I'll be saying to myself, if this VWAP is lost, obviously we're still well away from this, by the way, and I'll talk you through what you can do in these cases as well. Um, you know, if this VWAP is lost overall, you know, you're expect. you know, I'd be expecting at least these pip, these lows to be taken down here. You know, and that's the key with it is that once the v anchored VWAP is lost from your potential impulse point, that impulse point is impulse point is much more likely to be revisited, you know, and that's, that's the way I like to use these tools. And again, like in a case like this, where price is really, really far away from this, what would I do? Well, I'd be taking it from internal, in, uh, 
you know impulse points so for example down here okay price moved up again we're above everything and that's the thing i wouldn't be just going and going and going and taking it from here or here or here i mean i mean you could do if you wanted to but for me uh, you know this more 30 minute one hour trend is what i'm really interested in and this anchored via from those time frames will dictate that trend so for me again just looking at this on a more live perspective right now i would say to myself look the anchored v up has come in here i mean at least at 79k whilst we're above that this move has all rights to continue moving high and i should be placing my bets in that direction okay or if i'm placing scalps you know i shouldn't be expect you know if i'm placing any short trades i shouldn't be expecting price to at least breach any of this anchored v up point okay so yeah I, I, well at least until it happens so that's the way i'd be looking at this um anchored v ups again you can be taking this as well from ranges i'll do another whole separate video on that but for trending moves it's really really powerful um just for looking you know especially now that we're at all-time highs you know obviously be bullish but be aware as to when we lose key support levels such as these anchored view app from pivot points or you know from key impulses because then you can see large drops and you don't want to be placed on the wrong side of that because flushes can happen quickly and although right now yes i'm very bullish you can see prices moving up very very aggressively i just want to place that point of caution there as well so that is anchored view apps um the only other thing i wanted to mention on that as well is that when i'm taking these pools on anchored view app okay um I'm taking it generally from the, I mean, it's a very, very minute detail, but for something like this, I'm taking it from the first up candle in an upwards impulse, okay? That's why you saw me when I did this. I did it here, but I moved it to here. It's the first up candle, okay? So, again, just my preference. Um, but, yeah, these levels are really powerful. So, that is anchored VWAP. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention in this video is VWAP close and some stats around this, okay? So, what is VWAP close to begin with? Um, well, we, first of all, you have to you understand what session view up is. Okay, session view up is you know the view up starting from the very beginning of each day. At the end of the day, the view up closes, right? And then you get that level for the next day. So basically, what my indicator does, you can just search up view up close. It will come up somewhere. You know, you'll find see tons of indicators on it. Um, it will mark out where that previous day view up has closed. Okay. Now, what type of use is that? One could it provide as an SR level potentially? Yes. Um, more importantly for me, I was like, this is my questioning around it. Well, we formed this previous day view up close. What is the chance and likelihood it gets hit, you know, on the next day, essentially, right? So let's just remove the, the regular VWAP. And now you get these levels that all of a sudden um, get, you know, I'm starting to think, and this, I'm just through my whole process, the stats I collected, etc. cetera. Now um, you start thinking, well, look, they're getting hit quite often. How often they get, are they getting hit? Question one. When are they getting hit? Question two. How far away on the occasions that when price does hit them, you know, how far away does price move on the occasions where, God, I'm getting my words modeled up. On the occasions where price hits the anchored view app or the previous day view up close, what is the furthest distance price moves away from it first, okay, on average? And that's something I'm really, really interested in. So going through those stats here, right, let's just bring this up. On 666 days tested, <laughs> triple six, 76% um, of the view apps were hit, okay? Now, most people would take that as a blanket statement and start trading view up closes with their life, which is very fucking thick. Um, that's not the that's not the overall picture, okay? <laughs> um, because if we're looking now at view up hits per hour, yes, seventy six percent of the time they do hit blanket statement, but. 181 of those occurrences, right, occur within the first hour. A further 61 occur within the second hour. Um, so does it make sense to just blanket statement, try and trade every single, towards every single view up close? No. Are there circumstances where you can do? Yes. Um, so what I would say to myself is I started to go about that max deviation thing. You know, what is the furthest price on the, all these occasions, right? So all these occasions where price does hit it. These are all the occasions where price does hit the VWAP. You know, you can see there's only one time it's hit at 11. What parameters and filters can I put in place to really, you know, specify when I want to be looking for this directional bias? Number one, you know, are there certain hours where I, I want to be, you know, where, where it decreases the likelihood? I would really say at this point here, you know, from 3 p.m., 4 p.m. onwards, UTC, by the way, these are all hours UTC, you know, the chances are decreased. But that's fine, you know, so... 
from six till three is still possible you know is it prob- insanely likely no um, but partnering and coupling that up with the data of max deviation is really really powerful because what this tells us is like the max distance price should move away from it before coming towards it on average right so what i would say is you can see here on 168 occurrences this is um, i apologize for it being a bit dark um it generally would only move around 0.0%, so nothing, to 0.5% away from the, the view up close before hitting it, which is nothing, right? Um, there is a drop-off point here. So I, I personally have said to myself, look, if price moves around 3.5% plus away from this view up close, you know, it's very, it's, 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 it's unlikely it's going to hit for the day. Um, and you can play, now we've, now we've got time and distance parameters towards whether this view up close is like to hit on the day. Okay, so hopefully this is really, really powerful. And again, this is not, I'll talk you through a few examples now, but uh, this isn't the only thing I track. This is just something I'm willing to share. I think it's, um, it'd be fairly out there, maybe potentially. I don't think we have closed data is out there like this. But just to show you how my brain is thinking in, in relation to collecting data points. And, you know, I always get asked questions on the high hit rate levels. This is the way, you know, I tested VUP closes. Is this my most prominent level? It's definitely not. Um, but there are some edges to it, you know, if we're not that far away from it, uh, you know, and we're within, within the right hourly window, then yes. Um, the day this occurred, I'll show you, which was on Friday, the 1st of November, right? So let's talk about this. Like I said, 3.5% plus, you know, is getting unlikely. So if we're just looking here, the daily opens here, VWAP closes up here, you know, prices all the way down here. You're thinking, so I'm thinking to myself, you know, what's the chance we get up there? Well, the distance we moved away at that point is 3.3%. So in reality, I'm thinking to myself, if this low breaks, you know, we're, we're here in, by the way, I'm here in around London session. This is where I woke up. I remember 6, 6.30. You know, if this low is lost, then this is unlikely to be hit. You know, if this low holds and, you know, we move up there within a few, you know, it's possible to move up there within a few hours. This literally was my thought process. And I've showed you now the data as to why I'm thinking like that you know, it's more likely we hit it earlier in the day. I mean, through the hours hit, you know, you don't want it to be 4 p.m., etc. plus. So we're within that window of opportunity potentially. So I was looking for longs down here to target towards that VWAP close of previous day. And again, it's just days like that. Again, on aggressively trending days like this, you know, off the daily open, you're around 3.9% already away from it. You know, it's unlikely to hit that day. Is it uh, impossible that it hits? No. Is it you know is it less likely yes that's that's kind of my methodology on it um, and you need to have that kind of sweet spot window at least through all these data points that i've been testing so yeah uh again let's just go through today's example 3.2 percent. so similarly to today right what i would say to myself literally we have a potential scenario today number one and could be up you know i'm not bearish on bitcoin you know, it comes into line with it there. So it's possible we still come down. It's not, you know, we're not going to have to lose this level. We'd have to come down there. One, we'd have to come down there before 3, 4 p.m. today. So we'll see it. This, this video will be released before then. So you'll see how this turns out. Or option two, if this high is reclaimed, you know, before then, you know, the chances of it being hit are less likely again because now we're breaching that 3%, 3.5% kind of mark. We're in a massive uptrend as well. So I'm not going to be aggressively shorting here. You know, unless there's a golden level here, which from my looking so far, there isn't necessarily. Um, but yeah, this is the way I'm looking at VUP closes. The last thing I wanted to mention is, yes, uh, I've looked at this on the weekly VUP. I'm still to do some testing on the monthly. Um, but this is the way I'm looking at the VUP closes, okay? And hopefully you're finding this somewhat useful in relation to how I'm gathering statistics, using VWAP closes, using anchored VUPs as well for trend continuation, trend weakness, impulses, uh, session VUP for intraday biases, etc. Um but yeah, look for the deviations, reclaims, first touches after long distance away from it, uh, revisitation of view up closes depending on that time window. Um, but yeah, that testing was only on Bitcoin. Again, imagine all the testing you can do on all these different coins, etc. out there. There is definitely edge to be found in data collection um, and really putting in the hard work. So yeah, um, hopefully you lot found this valuable. Put any comments down below. I'm happy to answer them. I'm, I really need to get to, to doing all that when I can. Um, check out Exocharts. Check out Entropia. Uh, check me out on X. I'm there uh, most days as well. So if you have any questions, just come there. But yeah, I'm trading away. Thank you, everyone. I'll catch you later.